need me. Welcome to the Ryback Show live. Happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. I am the big guy Ryback, streaming live over on Instagram and TikTok. The big guy Ryback22. Thank you guys very much for watching the live stream. Here, swing on over to Ryback TV over on YouTube. We're at 423,000 uh, subscribers. Thank you guys very, very much for the love and support. On all of that, you are the co host of the show. You're, you ask the questions, the ebb and flow of the show goes where your questions go. Health, fitness, supplementation, mindset, pro wrestling, and anything and everything in between. Super chats are greatly appreciated and brought up on the screen to be answered. If not, I get to them as I see them in the comments section. We are streaming live today also on Facebook at Ryback Reeves and Twitter at Ryback. The show is available on all podcast platforms. iTunes reviews are greatly appreciated over there. Thank you guys very much in advance on that. And this show is brought to you by Feed Me More Nutrition, my premium supplement line, sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. No harmful artificial sweeteners or colors. Vegan friendly for all people, men and women, he, she, and thee on feedmemore.com. You get a free bottle of our one, two, three muscle joint tendon support all this month here, February as well, a $44.99 value. And all new customers can save 30% discount code Ryback. 30 Ryback 30 at checkout for all first time new customers and returning customers can save 20% discount code feed me 20 feed me 20 on feedmemore.com we've got all the Ryback merch and all the different accessories and everything on there check it all out guys which I'm going to bring one of my feed me more nutrition beanies to Baltimore this weekend I'll be doing an appearance appearance alert here February 5th in Baltimore for the Baltimore Celeb Fest 6 a lot of pro wrestlers are going to be there different celebrities and uh, doing a meet and greet. I believe Darren Young, Fred Rosser uh, from WWE with the Nexus and, and primetime players and now with New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to be there, I believe. So I'm going to have to wear a sweet, debating wearing my sweet yellow jacket. I got this badass yellow jacket that I, I go, but it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty strong yellow, stands out. And uh, I go, that, that would be very fitting to wear yellow and black for a Nexus reunion. With that, but I'll see. I'm just debating between that and a red jacket. I might have to message D Young and see if he's going to wear anything yellow. And if not, I'm going to be like, "Well, screw it. We're going to go. We're going to go the red jacket." With that, so, but I'll be in Baltimore 10 to 2 p.m. on Sunday. If you're in the Baltimore area, please come on out, say hello. They're doing pictures and autographs. They do charge for all of that. They bring us out. They do all the charging. I'm not charging you anything. I would do them all for free. But that's how you do appearances, and that's how you get paid with that. And you. You're paying to meet somebody at a specific location that you would not otherwise, you know, otherwise, what are the odds of running into me in Baltimore, right? That's how appearances work. Because sometimes you get people like, you charge for pictures and autographs. No, not in my everyday regular life. If you by chance happen to run into me and happen to have a, an eight by 10 of me or a, a magazine of me that you want me to happen to sign and, you know, and you have your phone ready and you get a picture, even though I, you know, you, you what are the odds? It depends. You gotta, you know, so that's how appearances work and they do it with everybody. So, but sometimes people get really mad over that. I'm like, well, you don't have to go. You could just stick with the old running to me by chance thing. You know, maybe I'll be in Italy, you know, before I die. And we run into me at a, at a pizza parlor in Italy. And he'd be like, that's a right, Mark. I used to watch you when I was a little boy. Uh, you know, and I'll sign a picture and take Send an autograph and take a picture with you outside the Italian pizza parlor. Okay. Otherwise, let's just let's be happy and move on. What's going on, guys? Let's get to your questions. Big news, big news starting off today. Tom Brady is retired from pro football. Thank you, Tom, very much. One of my all-time favorites. And um, we'll see if he sticks with it. Last year he retired on the same date and he came back. A lot of rumors saying the 49ers are, 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 are Tempted to, to make an offer to bring him in and for Brock Purdy to be under him for a year or two. But that would be to win a Super Bowl, no doubt, with that stacked team, which I am all for that. I'm more for Tom going to San Fran than I am for, even though 
I would love for him to be in Vegas to go to the Raiders. I'm not a Raiders guy. And so I, I, and I don't think the Raiders would, I don't want to see anything end badly with Tom. Like he had still had a great season despite it not being, it was the team. It was not great. And expectations were a lot higher, but you know, they just won a Super Bowl two years ago. Would they get to the NFC? Did they get to the NFC championship game last year, the year prior? So he still, I think, was third in passing yards this year. And there were a lot of things, though, that that just the divorce. And it was – and people, of course, are going to be like, well, he's uh, he's washed. He's he's old. He's, he's still playing prime football. And, and he's smarter than ever. And he physically takes care of himself. He's plant-based. He's smart, forever young. So – but uh, we'll see what happens. You never know. That's I'm really big on not retiring and just saying – because I think it's a – I, I just, you never want to get that reputation. But like, well, people just don't believe what you say on that. And so many people in wrestling are like, oh, I'm retired. And then they come back. It just doesn't mean anything. It's like, when you do, you want it to mean something. And Tom even said, it. he goes, I did my big speech last year. I'm not doing another one this year. And so it doesn't, so who knows? Maybe he comes back. I would not be upset if he came back again. But I also think he's very smart. And he probably, this is a good way of, if people are bothering him every day, and if you just retire, then people stop bothering you as far as like, to, to, you know what I mean? They, they stop asking the questions and he gets two or three months of like clear headed time off. And then he could just do what he was going to do anyways. Very possible. He's done this doing that again. But for right now, I think he has a sweet, like $350 million contract waiting to go into the analyst booth for Fox, like way more money than he's going to make playing football to just to just speak and he's he's very entertaining so i i look forward to that next chapter for him and if that is in, in fact what he does but i still think he has some some another super bowl in him eight rings to flash up the four on both all four fingers even but it's uh ultimately he, he knowing when to, to call it quits and to walk away. It's never an easy process and never is with any of the greats usually. So starting off sweet sugar, sugar in the house, Ryback show regular. Thank you for the super chat. Yo, fun fact. There has never been an elimination chamber match at WrestleMania. Do you think it'll ever happen? Well, I mean the, not with it being the pay-per-view prior to it every year, I think at some point, you know, maybe they, maybe they, they scrap in, in they scrap the pay per view and just leave the 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 where an elimination chamber match can be, if it, like you know for a feud and a special occasion that can be on any show. And I think Hunter mentioned that doing that, like, wouldn't he do it with Money in the Bank and uh, and different different pay per views that were themed around those kinds of matches. So I wouldn't be shocked if at some point in time all the gimmick pay-per-views are just scrapped with with names and then the, the matches can be placed on any of the pay-per-views, right? Outside of the Royal Rumble, which is obviously a, a, a staple, the four big pay-per-views, the, the, the four original, I guess, the, the original pay-per-views, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series, so... But uh, yeah, I, I I would say at some point it's very anything's possible. There's no rules in pro wrestling, so anything could happen at any point in time. Joseph says the GTS Go to Sleep uh, supplement has been game changing for my sleep, big guy. Thanks for the quality premium supplements. You're very welcome, buddy. This stuff is a very very big part of my life as well, and it's helped me tremendously. And uh, there's no better feeling being able to help people and in. in to get the messages and see things and people say, thank you for doing this. And like, it's like, I can't wait to help even more people because it, it's a really cool, cool feeling when people like when they get it and like, it, cause I think a lot of people, when I started this, a lot of people don't understand. They, they, they judge you, they, they stereotype you and, and, you know, they think, Oh, supplements, you know, snakes, oil, oil, snake salesmen, like just, just garbage and this and that. And it's like, no, 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 no. You don't actually truly understand real, genuine supplementation. And like it's, and I've been very passionate about this since a young age. It's, it's ingredients from food. And when you learn which ones to put together, they have very, 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 very 
powerful results that they could provide in that. And uh, and that's why I stand by everything because it is it is stuff that I live by. It's not me like saying, I'm going to come out with this to make money off of people, which is what the majority of people, which is why they put cheap ingredients and they put the the fillers and they put the artificial sweeteners and colors. And, and it's this is not what this is about. These were, how can I make these? I don't care what the cost is. The, and it's usually the most expensive because you're putting the best stuff in. And it's, and it's like, this is what we, I use this. This is so, this is what you get because I use this. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a different mindset altogether. But I think a lot of people are like, oh, you know, and you've seen other wrestlers try to do some of the supplement stuff. They don't stick because they're not passionate about it. They in and out, in and out, in and out. And they don't know, they don't know what they're doing with it. And, and it's, and it's just a different mindset, man. Like this is, this is my life and very passionate. And I'm a big believer in investing in ourselves and investing in our health. And that when we feel good, when we look good, life is so much better. <clears throat> what vitamins for a fractured foot? I would whole food calcium. There's a, a, a brand called new chapter that in it, it, whole food calcium. Uh, you, you, you cannot beat it. And it is, uh, I've, I've done it when I broke my bone and my, my fractured spiral broke my fibula in wrestling and the bones healed within like two months. And I was doing like twice a day of that, uh, whole food calcium and the dog, they were even, they, they thought like that kind of stuff. Take, it was like a five, six month prognosis for the bones with how bad the break was to be fully, fully healed. And like within two months, they were like, Jesus. And it was that, that new chapter bone. Uh, new, new chapter, uh, whole food calcium. And there's a bunch of different brands, but new chapters, the specific one that I used and got very good results with is what I would, whatever, what I would, I would, uh, recommend for a fracture. I have been to the UK many times, many, many times for pro wrestling and for appearances. And I, I went to the UK and did a tour when I first left, uh, wrestling WWE, when I was really injured, that was really bad health wise, but I did some really cool, a company brought me out and we did like these meet and greets. And like, there was like, I don't know if there were like a hundred, 150, 200 people. It, it, they were different. There were a lot, a couple of them where you brought me on stage and people, I just, they asked me questions and do just talk. And uh, you've seen them with like, you know, Bret Hart's gone and done them Nash, I think a different, different wrestlers. But I did one of those, man, and it, I tell you, it was it was a great time. I think one of them even had some beers for me. I was just like, this is cool. You get paid to just talk with with cool people and answer questions and have a few few cold ones. And you know, granted, I, like I said, I was really hurt. And then you like meet and greet, do photos with them. They pay for it. it's like an experience for like a, a two or three hour event, and uh, that was a lot, a lot of fun. I had a really good time doing that. <clears throat> Ryback, what's up? I met you at a gym in New Jersey back in 2013, 14. You were the coolest dude ever. Would you like, would you ever, would love to see you do a signing in New Jersey soon. Thank you very much, buddy. And, uh, you have not been back. When was, I was in New York, not long ago for the, a signing I did. That was a, a, like a, a, a virtual signing deal with that. But, um, yeah, I haven't been in New Jersey to New Jersey in quite some time on that but uh thank you i've met different people it's crazy how you can have different people and like it depends on what's going on today and if i could i can usually sense how people act if like people are like polite and other people if they just rub you the wrong way i'll just say like no thank you like if they ask for something if i'm busy or if i'm like if i don't feel like doing it if i'm at the gym a lot of times there were people like one time a guy and i remember because he went online and like wrote something really bad all I said to him was, no, thank you. He, he came up. I had my meditation on. And I used to listen to meditation at the gym. It was like an hour, hour and a half deal. And I didn't take it off. I didn't like to disrupt it. I always would leave it on. And that's always staying true to myself. And, uh, but again, this is like, you not. it's not up to me to like tell everybody, you know, a reason why I don't want to do something. But that's the reason why. And like a guy came up to the gym and I had my meditation on. And so I wasn't even moving my headphones. And he said, something. I just go, no, thank you. Not right now while I'm working out. And uh, it wasn't like, get away from me. I'm the big guy. F you. I hope you, I wish you a life of misery, brother. And then like threw him out of the gym. Like never. And it was just like, no, thank you. And like, and, like I'm not, but it's not up to me to like this. That's the reason why. And then some people like that will, 
they they don't get what they want. So then they they come up with, oh, he was the biggest a hole ever. He was so rude. He spit on me, kicked me in the d, and got me kicked out of my gym forever. So, but most of the time, it's pleasant experiences. Hey, Ryback, what are your thoughts on trend? I don't have any thoughts on trend other than don't do it. Like, I don't know what to tell you guys. And if you're following anyone that's telling you to, they they are the worst human beings on the planet. There are zero benefits you will get added to your life from doing something like that. Absolutely none. I feel bad for a lot of the young people today and kids and with the wall, like, you got to realize this is why I try to just be straight up with you guys. It's like all like stuff with steroids and stuff. You're just literally watching the mistakes of other people and you're letting their mistakes and their insecurities become your own. It's a very, very, it, 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 I, I've been there when I was briefly, even though I was never dangerous as far as like reckless, like, like, a, like these pro bodybuilders and people that go crazy and it would be considered extremely mild, especially by today's standards. With that, but still doing it. So there's no outside of therapeutic TRT, HRT by monitored by a doctor. There's no safe way to do it, right? So it, let's get that out of the way first and foremost. But and it was a very brief run and realizing, like, yeah, this is I. I was never like this. I don't need this. And um, but people today and with the social media and you know, it's like you get photo and it, it rewards the, the the algorithms reward people for showing their bodies. But you know what? If you actually look, I see people that are really out of shape. That there's some funny people that are like have the like very high body fat. They just they show like they I like commend them. Like they don't care. They but they get great views. Like so, it's like people think you need to necessarily like I go. Oh, I got to look like a pro bodybuilder to get a bunch of views showing my body and doing things. Like no, you don't. But it's also if you want to do that or don't want to do it. I think it's all quite frankly a little ridiculous all the time. And and I do different videos here and there. But like I see different women like having like they're just getting it's like I could tell like those women would not act like that if they weren't trying to get the views and where they're just like showing more and more. And what happens, it's like a pattern. And then after a few years, they're like, maybe I should just do an OnlyFans. And then like a few years after that, they're full blown, just a prostitute. Like it's and again, whatever you choose to do. But it's like this weird thing that's going on with that but i feel bad for the younger generation though where i was going is they think they got to take this stuff and take a bunch of it and that's gonna like give them a self-esteem and give them this sense of confidence and what they're really doing is messing themselves up for for the rest of their lives sweet sugar sugar do you think you'll end up on an episode of south park i watched an episode the other day and had edge john cena and vintage man on it I've never even seen that one. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of them since I was younger. I saw that shake weight one I said, which was absolutely hilarious. You know, anything's possible, you know, and once once back on, on TV, I think the you get on TV and I think especially having everything in order the way I do, I think there's a lot of opportunities now being in control the way that I am is is would be possible. I also think Times have changed even more from when I was there in WWE prior, where there's more opportunities now. But I will say, I think if this, and I'm very optimistic that WWE gets sold to Disney or a big company like that, I think that the, the, the I think it creates a very exciting era for for talent, current talent, and the possibilities that exist with that. And uh, that is what I and in, in improved working conditions, different people. That, that not from that wrestling world that can infuse better structure into that corporation uh, in treatment of the wrestlers. I think we're going to see some really, really cool things happen over time here as the business shifts away from Vince McMahon. Hello, hello. What a weird... I was in class 10. I play football. My friends cheer me with your name. And the bottom line is feed me more. Very cool. Italy. Good evening. Good evening, Italy. I am a Ryback. Right 
you don't want WWE to go downhill if sold to Disney or or another company. But that's just being you being negative and like with that and why you don't even know what's going to happen. So, and I think if you by a lot of people's standards, the product has gone downhill the last 10, 15, 20 years in general. There's people that love today's product more than ever. It just depends who you ask. Everyone has a, has a varying opinion on that. But to worry about a company going under that's not going to go under. All you have to do is uh, you need things to improve for, for the talent. That's the most important thing. It's like UFC fighters. You guys... They provide all this entertainment, and so many of the fighters don't make hardly anything, and they end up with nothing, and it's just an unfortunate thing. And I, I think pro wrestler con- they need to make contracts need to be worth more in general because the companies are making so much more money and that. And uh, but I can't worry about you can only worry about yourself and how you do business. And but I think overall the the, the industry, I think we're going to see some positive changes. Just want to say watching you eat all of them foods totally ruins my diet. Very sorry about that. That's my cheat meal for the week on there on the feeding times. WWE falling apart because Roman has been the champion for 800 days. I don't think WWE is falling apart because Roman has been champion for 800 days. I think most people think it's the best storyline probably in the history that the company has ever done, if not one of top five, top 10 storylines of all time. So I think everyone, again, has an opinion on it. I would just suggest to you to focus on a storyline or the things that you do like and talk about those. And then leave a comment like, hey, Ryback, cool to be on, see on the show. I really like, I really like what they're doing on, 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 on SmackDown with so-and-so or who, whatever show. I like what they're doing on Dynamite with so-and-so. But if you know, a lot of people tend to just like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. Well, what do you do? What do you like? Let's get your mindset on the right track. What do you like? Let me get rid of that. Ryback, I met you in Texas in a bar called Ligma Bar Barrels. Ligma Barrels? Ligma <laughs> I got a photo with you. Ligma Ball. It's supposed to be Ligma Balls, isn't it? Not Ligma Barrels. Is that the name of the bar? Because I did go to a bar in Texas once. I don't know where we were. It was a group of guys. I also signed a woman's chest, feed me more on it. She wanted on her uh on her large breast. That was like the peak of of Ryback mania. <laughs> Scrolling through your question to your guys. Who inspired me to start training at 12 years old? Who was your favorite wrestler? I always wanted to work out. Uh, I always like. I always was physical, like as far as uh, being a kid and and growing up. But I'd see my 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 mother work out. My dad would work out sometimes in the garage. Had some weights and would he would mess around with them. And I just became fascinated with. It. I think it was just. I honestly just think it was just so, somehow in in my my DNA in a way. It's just it's who I am. I love it so much, and I'll I'll do it till the day I die in one way, shape or form. Like I, I will stay active with that. So, but it was at that age, at a young age though, it was like, you know, British Bulldog, Bret Hart, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, uh, Diesel, Razor Ramon, uh, Mabel, loved Mabel, thought it was original Mabel. That was that whole era, you know, Yokozuna. I, I loved everybody. I loved everyone. I didn't, I, I just, like, everyone I was just in awe of that, that I watched growing up. Right back. What are your thoughts on Marcus? I don't know anything about that or that UK that campaign. I literally don't know what that is, and I'm trying to stay away, quite frankly, from a lot of the political stuff.
I have done all that boxing, jujitsu, Muay Thai. I stopped all of it when I started my stem cell procedures in order to get myself better. I enjoyed it all very, very much, though. My day is going well. Thank you very much for uh, asking. Very happy for Cody and everything going on. We talked about him on yesterday's show. I think he's under a tremendous amount of pressure, probably more so within himself after coming back from a very significant injury. And finally, the the path and the journey that he's been on, it, it's a mere months away. So I think the last thing, you know, you don't you want don't want to see it, a, a re-injury or an injury. Just want to stay healthy stay strong and try to peak for WrestleMania and to follow through with, with that storyline. And uh, I think he, he's going to do it. So it's uh, he's very internally motivated. And uh, I just, I, it, it, I think it's a, it's a cool, cool, very realistic storyline uh, playing out for him. And he's in a, he's in a very, very good role. <clears throat> Super chat here, Tyler Sugru. Thank you. I love the segment when Wade and Cena were supposed to call a, a truce, but instead Nexus came out and attacked Cena, but then Kali and others came out to help. I don't, that was, uh, I think I was gone already, right? That was after my ankle injury. Because Cena, yeah, Cena got involved right after, because we'd SummerSlam, went over on SummerSlam. We then went on a two week tour, and we were in, I got cut early for me when we were in Hawaii. I broke my ankle and kept wrestling and did a lot of damage uh, and then was done. And then uh, the, the Cena stuff, I think, continued after that. They, Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So, But I, I don't even know if I even saw. I'd have to go back and even look and see because it might have been a week or two that I missed everything because I was really, really messed up. Um, but I'd have to go back. That would Because there's a period of that where I've like kind of black, not blacked out, but like kind of just tried to forget about that period. It was, it was a horrible period, but that was, yeah, all that stuff was very entertaining. The stuff that I saw following, even though it wasn't, in, uh, it was very tough to watch from the outside after being a part of it and obviously not being a part of it anymore. It felt very, very bad not being a part of it. Like I let a lot of people down, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Can someone with asthma become a main event superstar? I would say if you can't breathe, you'd have a very difficult time doing anything in pro wrestling with adrenaline and nerves and having to be out there in a way, like never knowing when the stuff can set in. And never say never, I guess. I guess it would it would depend on, on the level of it and how fit and in shape you are. But to be a, a pro wrestler at the main event level too, you got to have a uh, – typically – have a very big gas tank and, and very good endurance and be be very well rounded. Um, so, I would say it would it would it would not be the easiest thing in the world with that. But unless you make the inhaler part of your gimmick, which I would completely do if I had asthma. Call yourself asthma Andy. You've got the inhaler. All the people that have asthma would completely relate to you and just do, you would be asthma Andy. Asthma Andy. I would pitch this. I would pitch this. And uh, you've got the inhaler. I, I would sell little inhaler things for people for their sprays. We would put little double A on it with your logo and then just sell the plastic tubing for the at the, at the events. Hey, you too can have a little asthma Andy inhaler. You just got to get the prescription from your doctor. Kids would just be going to the doctor saying they have asthma that don't. Potentially could be lawsuits down the road with this, but asthma Andy would have a nice run. We would give him an opportunity to make a living. Asthma Andy. Hey, Ryback, Elon found out that if you private your account, your viewership on your tweets go up. He's trying to fix that. But if you want to try out, go ahead. I'm trying to help you. Thank you very much. I actually saw him put that out this morning, which is why I put my account. My account's actually worse than it's ever been now. 
I'm getting like one to 2000 like impressions, maybe three on some, which like is under well under 0.5. I need to be up into the six, 7,000 range to even be at 0.5%, which that's getting, I'm very rarely doing that on the majority of my stuff. And uh, it's, I think, and I said on the tweet, I really believe that there's still people inside that building working there that have ties to the old regime that are not making Elon's life easy. And I think he's going to find this out as time goes on. I Because I think things, so many weird things have happened. Because my account actually got really good for like a, a, a stretch of like five or six days where I was getting thousands of likes on multiple multiple tweets. And I go, I haven't had this happen in six and a half years. And then it completely went away. And now like, so I don't, we'll have to wait and see. Their support is no help. Like I've tried to, like YouTube is really bad right now. If you look at my numbers on YouTube, they, they I don't think they've ever been worse. And uh, I can't even, I can't even get them on, 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 on a support chat. I can't, I can't, I can't get any answers. I've been trying like, Hey, what's going on? And, you know, why are the impressions so low? Even because my analytics, and see, this is what you guys don't, I see the analytics. So I see, I have good engagement on my analytics, good viewership time on my stuff. And I go, wait a second. That is all that is tied into that was what leads to more impressions, but I'm not getting that. So I'm like, this is, it's, I know everyone's sick and tired of it. Not, no one's more sick and tired of it than me because it hurts me more than anyone. So, <clears throat> But I'll give that a check. I'll check that out on Twitter. I'll set my uh, account after this to private and see if I, and I'll put out a tweet and see if I notice any difference. Tyler Sugar, thank you for the super chat. What about the time John Morrison was walking in the hall and you bumped into him and say, why don't you watch where I'm walking? And then the Nexus attacks him. I remember that really, really well. And uh, that was a really cool segment to kind of, that was a little bit of bully Ryback right there. And uh, that was a lot of fun. That was all our, our the beginning of our experience in WWE and seeing how television works and doing the skits and the the, the things backstage and it's uh it's really cool to look back and to realize where you were mentally along the way and then to actually and to evolve and grow and and how simple everything actually is now but remembering how simple it didn't seem that during that period of time different things it's because. It's because it's just everything in life is experiencing it and doing it and getting confidence and, and understanding. And once you get that breakthrough, it's and it. I'm very blessed that I, I had that breakthrough. And and it, the thing that I love so much is very comes, I believe, very easy now. But it always wasn't that way. And it isn't that way for most people. It, the ones that get it eventually get it. And it, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. That was a cool thing. I have nothing but love for Morrison too, man. He, he's an outstanding person and, and, and pro wrestler. Uh, I do stream on Twitch. I, uh, on Twitch, I'm on there almost every show. I just happened today to not do Twitch because I could stream from multiple outlets on this. And today, I chose Facebook, YouTube, which is always the main chain where the, the main stable where the show is, and uh, Twitter today. But usually, I do Twitch as well. I do not get seen on Twitch. I don't get any views on there, hardly. And uh, ever not all ever since WWE had their partnership with them, nothing happens. Like I'm talking nothing. Yet I grow on the other platforms despite the impressions not being good. But so that's why I don't really, I don't, I don't because I don't make anything from Twitch. So it's not. I, I still stream on there, but it's not beneficial to me in any way, shape, or form because my content doesn't get the show doesn't get pushed out on there. And I can't control that. Like, how can you explain? I can, I can get 100,000 views on my show on TikTok on that. And, you know, on, on Instagram, I get like 3,000. Not even nowhere near, you know. And on YouTube, we might get two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 for a week. Maybe 10 if we're lucky for, for random certain shows, which make no sense. But, and then, then obviously the podcast platforms and, and the different things. So, it was just, Twitch, Twitch doesn't. I mean, t Twitch is like, we'll be like, I'll, I'll put a, a show on there and we'll have 30 views. And, and I'm, I'm just like, how does that even, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we talked about that on yesterday's show about Sammy 
in, in Roman and uh, how that may seem um, like the natural storyline to do for Mania, but it looks like they're going to possibly do that at Elimination Chamber. And again, we'll just have to wait and see how everything plays out. Uh, too extreme. I would not be taking that much protein powder throughout the day. You're saying you take it in the morning, in the morning after a workout and at night. I, I think, I think one, maybe two shakes a day tops. You want to get as much protein from real food sources as possible. Even though I do like, I think especially like the doing the vegan plant-based foods and having a plant-based protein, I think that is very beneficial to have a serving or, or I do three scoops of it with a little natural peanut butter. I do that for my afternoon lunch before I go work out with some beets and celery, but the, uh, on the side, not all together, <laughs> and, uh, the peanut butter goes in the, in the, in the shake with that. But, um, you know, I think it, if you could replace at least one of those with, with, with real food, it would be better. But that depends too. If you're only doing one scoop, you know, or two scoops, it, it, it's, you know, is that that's that's not the end of the world, but I'm just you don't want all your protein coming from protein shakes all the time, daily, consistently. It's one thing if you're traveling and it's like a here and there, you got to do it to get by. Ideally, you want as much real food as possible, though. Looking at your questions here, guys. Someone has challenged me to a tables match. You sure about that? Uh, what inspired me to be a pro wrestler? Uh, to a professional, unfunny forty-two-year-old trying to be a rele trying to be relevant and. Wait, what? Who inspired you to be a pro wrestler? Where'd that go? To a professional, unfunny forty-two-year-old trying to be relevant in twenty twenty-three. The uh, well, I inspired myself for that. With that, quite frankly, and I'm forty-one, so not forty-two. That is a common trait for marks: is to they get the the they can't they're not really good with time, which is why Vince and them like if something's been two weeks, they'll say it's a month because they know you guys are horrible with your dates with that. <laughs> and I got to say, I think it's quite awesome that I could be 41 and unfunny in 2023. And here you are watching my show, which I think says a lot more about you than me. But we'll shell shock you out of Rybackville for just being a little mark. Hello, hello. I'm doing awesome. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, I did watch parts of the Royal Rumble. We have it on there. We have clips on the on the Ryback TV show as well. Somebody says you're being suppressed. Yeah, trust me, you don't got to tell me. I already I, I deal with this stuff on a daily basis. Sweet sugar sugar draining the the credit card today, draining the bank account. Watch your watched your three stages of hell against Cena yesterday. What did it feel like being dropped through the top of an ambulance? Uh, was there padding inside? Yes, there was padding inside. Um, but I actually, if you watch, I hit, I don't remember if it was my, um, I think it was my right elbow. I'm almost positive because it was my right elbow. Uh, I hit it on the ambulance as we're going down. Like it, we, cause we dropped, cause things don't always go, they, they have the part cut out where it breaks through, but as you're coming through my arm, I don't, my elbow just hit against the, the part that wasn't cut through. And I remember I banged my elbow pretty hard uh, going in. But other than that, it was fine. But that elbow stayed swollen off and on for like a period of months, if I'm not mistaken. Because if you go back and watch, there was a bully segment in California we did where I bullied the guy in the shower, that funny shower one, or unfunny if you're that little Mark, uh, that my elbow, my right elbow, you could tell is really swollen still. It looked really kind of weird if you look at my how my arm looks. And uh, my, my elbow, because I remember I look at that, I go, man, my elbow's all jacked up in that. 
and uh, which was just that's why that's why I always wore the padding and stuff because the you the 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 times that you don't or do different things and you get hit it man it like your workouts start suffering and it, it impacts your life outside of there and the name of the game it's like man if you just wear the correct that's why knee pads elbow pads secure tight not braces but like the snug like these like form fitted pads under the regular trace knee pads I would wear just to give yourself as much support out there as possible um because it doesn't you you want to protect your joints and your tendons and all the things so that you could you could just feel good at everything else because it, there's nothing worse than being beat up and jacked up and like going to the gym and like there'd be points by wrist we're all jacked up from just, just you're wrestling four or five minutes a week just these are things you don't miss time with but they hurt really bad and you're like having to wear like wrist straps i remember like there was a period there other few guys had the wrist straps we'd wear when we worked out because it'd keep your wrist my wrist would be sore from landing a certain way you just just bruise something or you just kind of and so it's like that's those are the little things i don't miss as much where you're like man i just feel good all the time it's uh it's a good feeling because it have been in that my whole adult life pretty much where you're just constantly and then played sports all growing up in football so you're constantly just like banged up and now it's like oh, it feels good to feel good thank you very much for saying i look good i, I try to try to maintain and, and keep my same appearance of the last 10 years nice little beard trim this week going into that baltimore appearance fresh shave job today bro please. the spelling on this is brutal buddy but the, somebody goes bro please eat ruffles but i'll let you all see it bro please eating ruffles <laughs> Oh man. Ryback, what are your thoughts on diabetes, Daryl? I have no idea. Is that a, that's another wrestling gimmick we're doing? Yeah, Justin, there's no doubt WWE, they have partnerships with all these social media companies. Like legit partnerships. Like they they are they are tied at the hips with these companies, so it it's and I've already that's why I've I've posted the 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 photo the 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 documents of them wanting my social media because that because we all know how petty and how how evil they can be we we all know especially those of us that are in it with it so I go okay I'm the only guy they've ever sent this to to give them their social media do you think it's that far of a stretch that they're not possibly involved. I walked away. I said, F you. I've won everything. I've spoken my truth on everything, right? Do you think they want me to do well? They don't want that to let other people to see that and be go, man, that guy walked out and he's he's better than ever. They are trying to make the, my life as difficult as humanly possible. And I don't care if anyone believes it or not. I know it based off everything that's gone on and things that have gone on. And so... I got to just continue to fight and the truth is going to win. And it's just going to, it's going to raise me, my stock even higher. Once everything realizes that I've been truthful on everything, but it can't sit back. I try to deal with these companies and try to get it fixed. Can't do anything. There's no, there's, this is such uncharted territory on anything. But like I said, hopefully Twitter gets fixed. And then when people can see that they're going to go, holy shit, he was telling the truth this whole time. And then that can hopefully lead to maybe getting some progress on other platforms. So, yeah, I've been, I, I was reading Elon, though, they are working on it. I know that they're working on it. And it's, I just think they were talking about the, like, the code is such a mess. We're going to get rid of this, this guy here, shell shock him real quick. No spamming the chat, pal. And uh, we won't have to worry about you doing that again. Uh, but they were saying they don't know if they're going to have to do a whole new code from scratch, which I almost wish they would. I wish the platform would just shut down for a month and just fix everything and come back a whole new Twitter. I, I think it would benefit everybody to do something like that, but I'm sure they could leave things running and they obviously can while they're making work on stuff and on the back end of things. But I, I like I said, I think they have, they have rats still in that company that are, I think, making things more difficult. And he will figure it out. And he's, this is people in 
they're gonna they'll be able to they'll 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 sniff these guys out and they'll get rid of them. But uh, I hope I hope to God that they get it fixed because it is there's nothing worse than being in purgatory like this and working and busting your ass and growing, being one of the most followed pro wrestlers on all of social media and not having they they do they do all this because then it messes me up. You can't get sponsorship deals because your actual numbers and the, the impressions aren't high enough. So it doesn't matter what your following count is, despite you previously having good numbers. It's like you gotta you gotta deliver on the impressions as well with that. And like if you're only you've got you know millions of followers and you know or, or 423 on here and you're only being seen by a few thousand what's the, that's like having that's like having 5000 6000 followers subscribers not 423 on that and that's where they they all of this is being strategically done it's not a conspiracy theory it is being strategically done to dry me out over time and the longer this goes on that I'm not able to get back, the harder it makes. That's why I, all my focus is on my business and getting my health back. Because then it's like I can get back in the game and then it's going to be raise hell and I make a lot of people's life lives very difficult. And I, I swear to God, I will be inside every one of these social media companies at some point in time making videos. Watch me. Watch me. Remember it right here that I said it. And at one point in time, I'm going to be able to be in a position and I'm going to, we're going to go there. We're going to go film a piece of content and I am, I am not going to hold back one bit because this is, this is beyond personal on, on what I've had to deal with, with all of this. Thank you very much, buddy. I like how Ryback shrugs off negative comments and laughs it off. Just lighthearted and positive. It's all you could do, brother. You, you, got, you realize I know enough where the comments come from. It's never anybody doing well. It's never anybody that I would look at and be like, oh, I respect them and their opinion. It's never coming from a good place or somebody that I value them, like as far as like what their opinion would be. And they don't know how to communicate. And I was like, if you don't like something, the fact that you're already by just making a negative comment, I'm like, what are you doing hanging out here then? Like, I'm not upset at you for like not liking me, even though I know if you met me in person, you'd love me. But like, but if you want to, you want to, you want to play that, go that route. Like, okay. But like, what are you doing hanging out here? Like, it's just, it's silly by all accounts. It's like, then you're going to comment like, like that person. They're like, oh, I'm going to get his age wrong or call him this on old, unfunny, irrelevant, like thinking it's going to ruin them. No, I literally won't give any thought to it outside of here. Boom, gone. Never will ex exist ever again. Unless you try to make another account, which most likely they will. They're like, we'll get him over on Twitter later. Ha <laughs> ha. And then after he blocks me there, we'll go over to the old Instagram and make a make an account when, with zero followers and it, it, no picture and it won't look shady at all. And we'll say pretty much the same thing, but we're going we're gonna to zing him again. I'm just like, you're just giving me your time all day is all you're doing. You, I'm, I'm alive and well in that person's mind. And they're a mark. And so like, even if they think they hate me, the moment, like if that person say that that hates me, that they, does that, they love the young bucks so. And then say like the young bucks are baby face getting beat up in the ring one night and feed me more hits. And I came out and saved the young bucks. That little Mark would love me after that. And they would, they, because and they have been alive in their mind and they would like, because they love the young bucks and that's how their little Mark brains work. And like, well, my back is a good guy. I can't believe I said all that to him. I like, I really like him. He likes the young bucks. I like the young bucks. That's how the Mark minds work. So it's like, I don't care that they hate me. They'll love me again at some point. You just gotta, just gotta manipulate them with a little storyteller. Hello, hello. Good to see all of you. Uh, there's a big, there's a big convention coming up here in South Florida. I think it would be awesome if you come. Can I send you info or do I send it to the convention? I have no idea what you're talking about, brother. I don't know what convention or what. It, I don't know anything. I, I'm not like, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything that you're talking about on that. Scott, what was your question? I didn't see a super chat on there yesterday. I'm sorry if I missed it. Ask your question here. I'll, I'll answer your question here. 
I don't know where I'm at with my shoulder. I'm feeling very good though. And a lot of work on it. It, it is not, it's not, it, it's not worth talking about daily from that. And I talk about it all, like so many people it, it's, I'm doing good. I'm not where it's not where it needs to be yet. Uh, would I change my gimmick or attire uh, when you return? Oh, the, no, so not the attire. I like the singlets. Now that's the, that's the look. That is uh, that is my favorite of that. And I went to the trunks and that was more to prove a point on something. And then I've talked about that in the past. And um, the gimmicks, I've done different gimmicks already. Yeah, it's not that's you play different roles. That's the whole point in different things. And there's it's it, it have the same brand, Ryback. You'd be the big guy. You could have Feed Me More on that, even though with that, Feed Me More is very baby face with that. And that's. But so it depends on on what the story. If it's you know, I've done the bullying stuff, we've done the heel tag stuff, and done done did played a coward for a brief period. That even though Vince, that was I think just a test to see if I would do it, and then they pulled it away because I did it. And remember, they, that was the whole cryback thing, where they had me quit against the Miz. That was a test I think to see if I would if I would play ball. And I always whatever you want to do. I'll go, I'll go out there and cry and quit. I don't care. And that, and then, and then him pulling me and, oh, we can't have you do this. I'm like, you're the one that wanted me to do it. I know, but it was dumb. I'm like, yeah, it was, but it, I did it. I did it really well, actually, too. But it's just so, it's a matter of what the role is and if you can sink your teeth into it and tell a good story. But Scott, let me see if I see your question on here. Uh, thank you for the support, buddy. We're gonna just block you off the channel, though. Don't spam my chat. I appreciate the love, though. I don't. I don't discriminate on here. It's. I don't. I don't care if you love me. Be act like an asshole and spam my chat, man. You're gonna get. You're gonna get kicked out. Go create another account. I didn't see that about the HBO special on Andre the Giant. And I saw, did I see where Vince said about Andre once Andre had no value to the company anymore? Insane. I did not see that, but that doesn't shock me. That's that's it's crazy, right? But when you're dealing with humans, it's not like dealing with with other things. And there's uh, I've just seen it. That there's no loyalty in the, in the company overall. And there, not to say that there can't be. And maybe for specific things, but I would really, I, that's why I just never, I never, when I talked to him enough, when I looked in his eyes with Vince, I just never, I just, I told him, I go, this is not somebody I care to really associate with in any way, shape or form. I just did not feel good internally. And I, and I, I was not wrong on those assessments. I, mean, I never am on it. And, uh, and I, and I gave it plenty of, of chances and uh, there's, there, I'm telling you, there's dark energy in this world guys there's different than like you don't get to certain places like that unless you have kind of a, a, a darker a darker soul or a, i don't know what it is but it ain't it ain't ain't what i'm playing with and it, it's it is what it is it's oh it's called florida supercon they usually have wrestlers yeah you would have to contact the convention that those i don't i don't they, those places contact you and stuff. And I am doing the appearances now here and there if I can on the weekend. So, so really loud. Well, I think my, my uh, landscaping people are here. They've got their leaf blower. I think they're up on the side of my house. So I apologize if you hear a little loud motor going for a few minutes. But they bring you. They, they t typically they have those events and they have vendors and different people, and then they bring they bring out the talent. Like they pay they pay a fee to bring you out. They fly you out, put you in a hotel, and then and then they they are the ones that 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 profit off the pictures and autographs and all that, where they recoup their money and, and hopefully make make a, a good amount of money as well. Hello, hello. I do get my heart checked. I'm actually probably will 
it's been a few years since the last full, I had a whole, whole full heart exam, perfect health, coronary artery calcium score of zero, perfect, no heart, no heart issues whatsoever, extremely healthy, very high endurance cardio levels, um, VO2 max, like everything is, I'm prime, prime, like literally prime right now. And I, I think even better than I was then on, on certain things too, especially with being plant-based and uh, vegan there for four, 13, 14 months and just heavily, heavily plant-based ever since. So I would say probably end of the year, early 2024 would be where I will, I will probably go in and get another full panel uh, done on everything. And, but yeah, extremely healthy. Now I'm, I'm vax free on all of that. Like I'm feel very, very, very strong and healthy. Hey, big guy, this is actually a good question. What are your thoughts on this new trend of TikTokers recording themselves in the gym? And if anyone in the background even glances at them, they are posted all over social media. Um, I did. I saw a, a woman and I blocked her on TikTok because she literally made a post of a what you just said. It was a guy in the background working out, didn't do anything wrong, but she's in there working out. She's doing whatever hip thrust, I think, or something. And uh, but wearing the skimpy workout clothes and but the guy, the guy like there wasn't a, another direction really to look, but he wasn't like gawking at her. And now, again, I don't know. I don't know if she claims he was like following her around the gym or I, this was just one little thing I saw and there was, and, uh, but like posted it, like this guy was like invading her rights and this and that. And it was, it was it, a lot of people in the post didn't agree with her. They, they go, the guys did not doing anything wrong. Like, what do you, you know, but then like other women, like, yeah, girl, like I deal with this too. And it's just like, but I, I think this is always like, I'm always very conscious of this. Like if I want to get a clip of me just working out, on something to, to post for, I'm doing it for my supplement company. I'm not doing it so people could watch me work. I'm doing it because I have a supplement company and it's directly correlated with that. But even besides that, still doing it every once in a while. Right. But I try to do it. Or if I have somebody with me that like where I, they don't film other people, because i never want to be in anyone else's video. I never want to be, I don't want to be in, in the background of anything because it's just, it's, it's not, it's, I think it's disrespectful with it on that. When, when you do that and, and clearly somebody's working out and you're kind of messing up them, like, or you at least ask them, Hey, is it okay? I'm going to shoot a quick little video for social. It might, you might be in the background, you know, at least have the common courtesy. And then, then maybe they go, Oh no, I'll move You can go ahead or, you know, but a lot of people don't even think that they just like, they, people are doing stuff, but like that, I think what you're talking about, like they're creating hate for people. To, to try to get views and to do things and to create attention. And I'm not a fan of any of that stuff. And I'm not a fan of anything where people like the, the, the comedy skits where you, where you are ruining another person's day. Like the people that go up trying to be funny and they go, hey, man, man, man. like they whisper or like, Hey daddy, like, like the guy, like the young guy will go whisper and guys behind their ears. If I see those, I block whoever posts them. I'm like, I don't want to see them. I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to reward them by doing by, by, even if I don't like it, that's, it's the key is not commenting on that with that kind of stuff, but like, or people like I've seen people play pranks on like older people that are really stressed out where you're like, man, you could, you could, that guy could have a heart attack. You could, that woman could have a heart attack or you scare old people, anything that you were doing something infringing on people's rights of their everyday, just their life. And you think it's okay because it's, Oh no, no, yo, yo, it's a prank. It's a prank. That doesn't know you're still doing the act. They don't know that it's a prank. And you don't know them. It's disrespectful. It's not like you're pranking a family member or somebody that you know. You're doing it to strangers. And I'm not a fan of that. And that's what, anytime you see something like that, if you're not a fan of, the best thing that you can do is to actually not comment and to block those accounts. That hurts them far more than commenting because commenting lets more people usually see it. And they get more more viewers because there's enough bad people out there that we go, oh, yeah, it's funny, ha ha. I'm not a fan of that stuff or anything like that. Just man, like just being a decent human being. Like, we all we all know what that is at the end of the day. And that's when I like, you know, but you're dealing with people, they want attention, they want they, they'll do whatever they can, and and that's that's their their thought process on it. And 
they don't they're not they're not they don't care about anything other than that feed me thank you for the super chat pull that up here hope all is well big guy did you prefer playing heel or babyface while in wwe and what was it like playing each of those gimmicks much love they both were a lot of fun uh i'm uh my live has ended on instagram here i'm just gonna go ahead and share that to the to the channel real quick knock that out one less thing i have to do after the show is over the uh i i enjoyed both but heel was a lot of fun um but i i i i genuinely enjoy being a baby face more uh especially having now a brand and business where everything and living in the in the in the world that we live in because i honestly think i could play a really good bad guy i think then like when i did the bullying stuff it created a lot of hate for me and that and that that i'm not a fan of that necessarily like i get it but i i wish people that's why i say it's physical acting on that but so many people don't view it as that and then they they comment horrible things to you because of a role that you're playing and it's like you can handle anything you know, like at the end of the day like i laugh like but i i'm more upset that i sometimes can't do anything about it <laughs> i'm like man if i if you said that to me in person brother <laughs> you know you better hope other people are around but uh and and i say that kind of you know half joke and half not depending on on the person and the scenario with it but like some of it is uh it's just ridiculous but i always enjoyed i enjoyed both but baby faces is, is where I'm, I'm the most comfortable um just with where i am at in life and what i'm doing i think it's better to, to play uh a, a baby face character or it, and again in like being yourself on social media and, and like i am I would, nothing would change on any of this i you know based off the role you play and it shouldn't you shouldn't let that because it's physical acting on that and uh and the kayfabe and all that i'm far past all that now i'm like it's when you're playing a role you're playing a role when not not but a lot of people don't view it as that and they they think that because you you play that that that's who you are and uh and vice versa for for people that are good guys are sometimes some of the worst people it's just it, it's a lot of times it's crazy how that all works but i i enjoyed both I, and I, I tell you, if I could, you know, being a heel, it's really fun riling people up and, and to, to do that stuff. But and, and I, I'm grateful I had the experience at that time. But I, I tell you, having a business and everything and, and being a baby face is 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 probably what's best for business overall. Now, saying that I would still be open to doing to doing heel stuff specifically for short periods of time. More than more than open to that, but it's again not altering my social media not not stopping my stuff and it would you would you would still be getting this uh no matter what role i play thank you very much zany for the nice nice comment i really appreciate you saying my videos make your day thank you very much Yeah, like the people when, they, when they're pranking people, then they go, they push back, and the guy's like, just whoa, whoa, it's a prank. Yeah, that's where I like. There's people that the, the guy. Have you seen the guy that goes? He does like, he goes up to like people in really rough communities, like throws up gang signs or want to be gang signs, and like, well, like, yo, you in a gang, and like, or like, yo, you want a bang, and then like he'll have a bang energy drink like under his under his under his thing. But like, man, you're playing a risky game with people doing that for real uh in, in not knowing who has a gun who doesn't have a gun and who's gonna throw down right away it just takes one punch to ruin your life with that you get knocked out you hit your head on the ground you could be you could have significant brain damage for the rest of your life that person then all of a sudden gal could be in a position because of their their what they did you know what i mean and and, and, and be compromised in a very severe way for the rest of their lives with it so it's like that's why i'm not a fan of that stuff with people doing that it's just, it, it, it's not necessary. I think it's selfish. You're, you're trying to get views off of other people. So instantly it's offensive to me with it, right? It's like, dude, the, the guy, he does that. And then say he does get punched and get knocked out. It's like, oh, and then he goes, it was a prank. I didn't know it was a prank. Now that you say that, I actually feel kind of bad about it. But I didn't know it when I punched you, right? And that's like, that's what these people they're going to they're going to cross the wrong person at some point in time and then they're just not going to be posting the content anymore 
Like, I wonder why he doesn't do those videos anymore. It's because somebody somebody stepped up, did God's work. Uh, yeah, video recording, though, somebody says seems like a daily trend. Video recording should just be banned now because of this. And I, you're never going to, you just got to have common sense and common courtesy. That's why I tell you guys, like, in using restrooms, I've dealt with enough wackos and weirdos where it's just like, man, I'll even, too, if a gym has, like, a private bathroom, I'll just go into that and avoid people altogether. But, like, it's, I, I've dealt with some weird, I've talked about it, the bathroom scenarios with people and, and pissing in the urinals and, like, it, man, whack job central with that. And it, it, now it's just, but you never know. Like, there'll be people, you could be in there, you see it all the time. People do stuff and they have their, they, it says no cameras in the bathroom. All the guys, everyone has their cameras out trying to record different shots. And like, I literally the other day was a guy recording and the person right behind him, this old guy was, was completely naked getting changed. And like, and I don't know, I didn't, I'm not like looking and seeing exactly where the cam, but he has his camera. All he has to do is just turn it, and like, you know, it's like people, and they, that's where he's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And me having my experiences with the with the whacked out fans at various points, the marks coming into the bathrooms trying to record and different things, you're just like, get out of here. But I had a woman, I told you, I do, uh, this happened to me in Detroit. Man, I love how I could remember. So in Detroit at Royal Oaks Fitness, it was I was stretching. Uh, I would I would stretch a lot before I worked because I was warming up essentially for the day, where I would I would get a big stretch at the gym, do my workout, and then it would when I got to the arena, I wouldn't have to stretch as long because I would already be warmed up. But I'd go through a, still a routine, but it, that would be my big big one to, like at the gym. And I remember, and I was wearing my my workout pants and probably my tank top and all beefy and freaking jacked. This woman had been recording me for like 15 minutes and I finally caught on and, uh, and she wasn't uh, what I would describe as uh, attractive in my opinion. So it made me even angrier, <laughs> but uh, she was recording me stretching and like I was doing a lot of different, like different things and, not even realizing that somebody is around one staring at me and two recording. And that was, I remember the first time I really, I was just like, man, this is what it must feel like hot chicks with something like, but like being recorded and like, and I, I had her, I had her delete it. And I just said, I go, you, you don't, you don't do that. I go, what if a guy and the granted, this was a far stretch because this would never happen with her, but what would you do if a guy recorded you stretching for 15 minutes? I go, how would you feel? And she goes, I wouldn't like it. I go, so what makes you think that I like it? And then she just had to sit there. I had to let her process all of it. And she deleted it. And we deleted it off her deleted. Like, because you double delete that shit. You get it out of their memory. And uh, and that was that. But people are, man, people are going to people. People have been peopling since the beginning of time. People are going to people. That's why, too, I'll tell you guys, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, Scott, I'll look up. I'll get your question here, buddy. Now I see it. Thank you. I'll answer it right after this. That's why I always never agreed with this. Like all the law of attraction people and all the gurus, they'll go, we are all one. And what they mean by that is we are all one energy that we all have the energy of, of, of whatever you want to call it, the universe, God, whatever the name that you want to call it. But there, we all come from the same energy source. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't dispute that or argue that I, I agree with that. I agree with it. But what is not talked about is we all are not one when we are on this planet. Our egos and different things, we are not one. We are all separate entities on this. And they never talk about this because it doesn't sound as positive and as good. And it's like, no, there is clearly people that are possessed and that are evil, that don't play by the rules on this planet, that they we are not one. Maybe once they expire on this planet and move on, that energy source, because when we hear about people that talk about people that pass away or have near-death experiences, their ego is lifted from them. This is a common thing for people that have, that, that have talked about this. in the. And again, I don't know this for sure, but this is one thing I've seen this common people that, that die. They talk about being free of the ego. And that, and that is the, our ego is what in, makes us individuals on this planet, on this and outside of that energy source. So whenever I hear like we are one, yeah, yeah, we are one energy source. There's no denying that, that, that we all have, are playing with the same or, or, or energy, but the, 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 the ego is not individual. 
with that. And it was like, I saw there was a little story going around about a girl, uh, a, a man who killed her mother and she, uh, hello, hello, a dude killed her mother and she over time, like he eventually was released. She felt sorry. She would go visit him in prison and she employed him and he ended up killing her at the same place. He killed her, her mother eventually with this, but it was just, whether it was made up or it was true, it, it came across, it was like a news that it was true with it. And, and I'm sure it doesn't, it doesn't seem that far fetched, but there are other instances where, but this is just the example I'm using with that. I go, you can't, evil doesn't play by the rules. That's not the same. Yeah, they're the same energy source, but that's a different ego with that. And that's like people, that's what I think it's important for people to realize. But I think it sounds good when we want to unite people. Like we are one, we're all the same. We're one. Yeah, we are all one energy, but unfortunately there's a lot of bad, bad, bad egos and human beings on this planet. And while we're here, we're not all one, unfortunately. it's We can be, we can unite with other good energy and good people, but we got evil doesn't play by the rules. And that's why bad can ruin it for everyone if we're not careful. And you got to fight bad. You can't turn the other cheek. You can't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's it's not practical. And it, it's like all the, the gurus and they're not here. They're not dealing with it. It sounds good. It looks good on a quote. It looks good on paper. It works in certain scenarios. It, nothing is ever bulletproof and a, a guaranteed 100%. And you've got to use some common sense on things. And that's where I feel like I was like, I want to mention that today because they never, all these gurus never talk about that. And they're never questioned on it because I don't think anybody's actually done enough to be like, what about our ego? We're not, our egos are all individual and not like, that's not, has nothing to do with our energy source. So. Let me see, Scott, the question. I'm scrolling up here. There were a lot. Let's see if I see your super chat from yesterday, but you're for the question. Hey, big hello, hello. Scott, I'm not seeing the question. If you type it again. And put it down at the bottom for me, please. Because there were a lot of there were a lot of uh things in here. Uh I don't know if I've ever wrestled. I don't think I've ever wrestled with Sami Zayn. I he was on the roster at the end, towards the end when I was there, and we got along very well and had some con great conversations with him. I like him very much. And, uh, but I, I don't believe that I wrestled him. Thank you, Burning Motor, for the nice comments. It happens to everybody. Anything time you're doing whatever you love and you're a pretty decent, happy person, it, it upsets a portion of people. And, and with that comes hate. So the main thing is to mainly try to focus on the, on the good stuff. I hate the whole glimpse thing in the gym. Plus, I never understood the idea. Film yourself in exposing gym clothes for views, but someone checking you out in real life is bad. Great point. These women or people post the most ridiculous things that they, they, they're wearing workout pants and hiked up, like full camel toe and all that, and not and no underwear or very revealing clothing and doing things to so for the views. But they're upset that they're in the gym and people might look. Now it's one thing if somebody's really being, you know what I mean. But if somebody just looks over and they're you're wearing like you're attractive, you're wearing that to like, right? I wear clothes to cover up. I wear baggy clothing, and I, I don't like people like if I don't want to show my body and like. But I'm more than comfortable. I could throw on anything. I, I love. I could be naked. I love being naked. But I, I don't do that. Like I don't want attention at different things and with that. And I learned that a long time ago that just covering up is the easiest way to just kind of live a jacked muscular life and be happy and without people judging you or talking to you or bro, like, bro, what's your routine? Like, I don't want to talk to that guy, <laughs> you know, because it's usually, it's not, it's more that more women can be intimidated too. So it's like, it's, dude, like, what do you give to bro? Can I get your weightlifting routine? Man, look at those biceps. 
bro. You're vegan? Ah, how you get all your protein, man? You know, I don't want to deal with this. I just cover up. <laughs> I hope Jeff Hardy has a great year. I I, I like Jeff Hardy and, and want nothing but the best for him. I'm looking to see if I see the other comment by Scott. I need you to post your comment, brother, so I could I want to get to it for you here, but it, you got to help me out a little. There's a lot of comments in the chat, and I don't see your name outside of when you said that you left it. I'm not going to... I love how you have your dogs in the videos. Thank you very much. I love Sophie and little guy more than anything. They are, they are, they're getting ready. They're going to go do my shake after this. And uh, I take, I go get my coffee and I take them to the park, which they're probably going to pop up just hearing that and uh, take them for a walk at the park in a little bit. And, uh, and then, then I got to go do a big, big leg workout today, some conditioning and sauna. I am 41 now. I feel better than I've ever felt and just got a little work to do on this shoulder. But I am uh, I have prime, prime, healthiest years coming up. I I, I think it's going to be a hell of a – the 40s are going to be absolutely outstanding for me. 40s and 50s, I think, are my peak years really just physically, mentally. I'm very excited with, with where everything is sitting and where I'm at. I'm glad you're uh, just still embracing the wrestling community after all the hate you've experienced since leaving. It's all made up, though. So you got to remember, I know that it's made up. I know that it's not real. And I mean, you got to remember, I meet great people every day. I meet people that tell me they love me, they miss me, that they grew up, I was their favorite. I mean, like, hell, just going and giving blood the other day, the woman recognized me. And she goes, my son absolutely loved you when he was a kid. And uh, he, we could never find your action figure. And it always drove me crazy. She goes, you were so popular. And she goes, we finally found it one time at one store. And he he was so, he was like, she was, he was never happier. And I go, well, how old is he now? She's like, he's 17. And we were just talking and about things. And I was telling her about things going on. And and uh, but she just goes, she goes, you're so nice. You're so sweet. And like, because we, we were just talking before that, before she even told me, she told me that after it, she was comfortable enough to tell me with it. And, uh, but I deal with this stuff like every day where I know, I go, I know who and what I am. I just don't put up with bullshit. B, I try not to cuss it, but BS. And because uh, TikTok or Twitter, YouTube's now limiting my ads on all my videos, on the majority of them, on, on the show. And I, I'm assuming it's because if I drop a cuss word, I don't know. They never did it before. But uh, another way to further ref, uh, affect ad revenue. But I know the truth on all of this. And I, so I can't control that people go read a made up article or this and that, or don't understand what's going on. A lot of people are very loyal to just WWE in general, that anybody that if anyone speaks out, like a lot of people just are looking at things from a creative standpoint, they're not understanding what like the legal stuff that's gone on and the things that I'm actually fighting for and what I've done with it. And so like, I know the truth at the end of the day. And that's why the, the most important thing for me is don't lose, don't lose sight of the truth and don't lose your confidence. And you don't lose your confidence by doing the work, by busting your ass every day, staying in, in peak physical shape and being ready to go. And once you can overcome the, the, the health stuff, that's never been overcome by the way with it. So I just, I keep going because it, you can never let that win. I would never, I don't, I can't, I don't, I don't value it enough to let it ruin my life or with that. And there's so many good people out there with it. And so that's why too, you guys think, it, they've suppressed me so that the bad seems like it's worse. It's not. Like, look at my TikTok. I'm one of the most loved pro wrestlers on TikTok. My comments are overwhelmingly 99% positive on TikTok. Three and a half million fo uh, followers on there. How's that? That right there is, is and they, even them, they, the last since their partnership with WWE, have done all this stuff. They kicked me off the creator fund. I'm still that on there. That's your, that's what you go by because all this stuff and like, and still on all, you add up all the other accounts still one of the most followed overall pro wrestlers in, in the world. I'm in the handful of, of, in the top, whatever it is, thousands of whatever, of all time, most followed people of most recognized, like 
you know how rare that is just in general? Like it, it's extremely rare. I've been very blessed. So I don't let that, that, that hate negativity. That's like, you know, I see it and I could just, you look at them and I go, I know, I know the truth. So you just block it and keep going on. I'm not going to try to change their mind. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm not going to waste my time. You know, just continue to be me. Try to talk to you guys. Try to talk to as much good people as possible. Call out a hater every once and then on it and, and hit a knock, knock shell shock and, and go about my day. I remember you mentioning cortisone shots a while ago. I've been dealing with whiplash from a car accident. I had an 09. I have had three shots in the last year. Do you know how long uh, term effects of these? Yeah, I probably would stop that ASAP. Cortisone is only going to cause cortisone used rarely in, in for an emergency to maybe get through something and like, okay, but used consistently is going to, it's going to like, it ate away all my cartilage in my right shoulder. So I don't have any cartilage in my right shoulder. I would give anything to have my cartilage back in my right shoulder. And it was nothing injury-wise that I did that did it. It was them pumping me full of cortisone inside my shoulder joint that never, ever should have been allowed. Never. That should not have been the spot that the cortisone was being injected. So I would be very, very cautious with that, Scott, and, and look into alternative treatments and things. And uh, I would honestly look into – if I would look into stem cell therapy – that bioaccelerator company is the best in the world. Obviously, I know finances are different for everyone, and but I, I would look into more natural pain remedies other than cortisone shots. It's not fixing your problem. It's not good. You can't do it long term. It's going to eventually. You're going to eventually have to stop because it's going to cause so much damage. It's going to either it's going to speed up the surgery, or it's going to and then that's going to cause a whole new set of problems. And then they're going to put you on pain pills. And then most likely pain pill addiction and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a miserable life. It's almost the case for almost everyone that goes that route. I've I've never met anyone that had back surgery and it was on pain pills. And they're like, brother, my life has never been better. Their life is, is worse. So that's why I went the route I went with trying to fix myself naturally and was blessed to be able to do so because I knew that the other one did not have a good, does not have good statistics on the outcome of it. Cortisone, though, very bad. And doctors, a lot of doctors are in the game of selling. They sell surgeries. That's where they make their money. And they 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 groom you. And they'll, they'll this surgery with that, you know. Whereas, you know, do they talk to you about a plant based diet that cuts down on inflammation massively? Do they tell you? Do you know the primary source of back pain is having weak glutes, having a weak ass? Do you know that doing things like kickbacks and if you could do body weight squats or squats or hip thrust with weight, things to build your glutes up, the stronger your glutes are, the better your back is. I know this firsthand and I learned it. And that's why and like, and my back is like as if nothing ever happened after the stem cells and strengthening other areas of my body further than what I was on that. And so I know firsthand, but are doctors giving people this information or do they go, uh, yeah, we'll just do this and you, you'll come back in and those cortisone shots are going to get more and more frequent because they're not going to work as long. And then eventually you're going to be in so much pain and they're going to have caused so much more damage on top of the pain that you were in because they don't fix anything. They just mask the pain. And then you're going to, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a worse scenario than you ever started. Hello, hello. But with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's show. I've got to get on, carry out my business here. And the dogs have actually, little guys behind me right here with Sophie lying down. They clearly heard the code words a little bit ago. So I got to go have my ISO hungry protein shake and my, my peanut butter and beets and celery with that. And, uh, and then go do legs after I take them out for their little afternoon trip with everything. So please check out my feed me more nutrition guys. We'll be in the description of the comments on that for the discount codes and saving, uh, on the deals on that and the, all the Ryback merch, your love and support is always, always, always greatly appreciated. We will be back here again tomorrow for another Ryback show live with that. And hopefully for Friday, and then I'll be off on the weekend as I'll be in Baltimore on Sunday for an appearance from 10 to 2 PM at the Baltimore celeb fest. 
So once again, if you're in the area, please come on out. Please hit that subscribe, that like, share this channel, guys, if you can. And uh, let's keep on growing. Let's have a great day. Thank you again very much, guys. Until next time, stay hungry. Feed me more. Hey, Rybackers, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe, and shell shock those notifications. For the best supplements on the planet with Feed Me More Nutrition and all the latest cool new Ryback merch, visit FeedMeMore.com.